some brands just have it. At their core is an intense drive to invent, to create, to do things that have never been done before. Design is simply in their DNA. Let's explore the creatives behind these brands and find out how they approach making life a little better for those they are designing for. This is Design DNA. The cool thing about, you know, starting with a pen is like as soon as the ink hits the paper, there's something magical that goes on. That's the beginning of the whole design process. I start with a pencil drawing or a pen drawing and that's where it becomes real for me. When we start designing a collection, um, we have to focus on getting the core just right because you can have a lot of fun with all the external pieces and those really make for the jewelry pieces of the room. Some of the core pieces would be the bed, the dresser is very important. You gotta get that right. You know, dining table, buffet, that's a good start. Occasional, you have a cocktail table and an end table. Hooker Furniture was started 96 years ago, 1924, I believe. So the design process from Hooker really starts with um, more of a board of ideas and conceptually where are the trends and whatever we're trying to do. So you start to see these boards that have colors, that have materials, that have things that could come into play for a major collection. You know, it may be a photograph of, um, you know, island in Fiji, you know, or the Maldives island. And then how do we take that and take it into it the next, what do you, what do you feel when you're in that space? So we try to create like mood boards that create the space. That's really where all this stuff starts is you get, you get emotional about it. It affects you somewhere in, a, in an emotional and, and safe place and, and, and then you start to build around it. So all the rest of these images were really different reference points that we thought fed into the same theme. In the team collaboration, when we try to find a common thread that works together, typically it's pulled together with finish. Finish is a common thread, um, but with also the, the details. I mean, you may have three finishes or four or five finishes in a collection, but they all have to work together. That's the common thread. We have to be ahead on the design curve. We cannot be following. We can't be in the middle. We have to be ahead. A lot of times, you know, something we do in accents tends to feed what we do in a future collection because accents tend to ride further out front in the design curve. You know, you can take a chance on an accent piece easier than you can on an entire collection. When we um, design a piece of furniture, like a dresser, um, and we cat it out, we send it to the manufacturer, we ask them to do a, a mock-up. Uh, you know, just something we can look at visually. And then they'll send it to us, we'll look at it, review it, make sure it's the right scale, proportion. Then we work on finishes that make sense. What's current? What are we gonna do that's differentiating? Not the same brown, the same gray, the same color in feel. We try to go after things in a way that you see it and say, wow, I've, I've really never seen anything like that before. Designing a piece of hardware is is really the jewelry of that piece. That's a fun part that I love to do. The hardware is the jewelry that we put on furniture. The hardware has to be textural. It has to feel and look like it works with the collection. Hardware tends to be a subconscious um, thing when you're looking at a case piece or looking at a, um, a dresser or a nightstand or whatever it is you're buying. When you go in and you see that hardware, you see that, that product, your eye doesn't necessarily go to that thinking, I'm gonna buy that piece because of the hardware. But what it does is it's a subconscious feeling of everything works together, everything is beautiful. When we start studying finishes, we do look at different lighting. I will take it outside. Outside light is the most, the purest light that you can get. So we'll study it with that lighting, but we'll also look at different lighting that will be in different homes. And then, then we have to bring it into our showroom that has different lighting. So it also has to work well with our showroom lighting. My favorite thing about designing furniture, um, you think about you know, drawing it, designing it, creating it, going through the whole uh, uh, 
uh, product development path of that. That's a lot of fun, but truly, the best time that I have designing furniture is when it does sell. Then you know that, that your design intent has struck a nerve out there with the consumer. That's when you know you've hit it. We're trying to, we're, we're trying to think about that, like what, what do we really do? We create happiness. We create happiness in the home. The real moment for me is months after that when I start to see those orders. And then, you know, all the work you put in to, to trying to make this special, you know, to make this, you know what's going into someone's home. These aren't museum pieces. We didn't do them one time. Somebody's buying this, they're putting it in their home because they think it's gonna improve the quality of their lives. The real value in the design process for me, the real moment of satisfaction is when we know we made people's lives better and made their families happier. Um, it's just a really satisfying feeling.